I built this 6x48 inch belt sander five years ago and it's the belt sander I use the most. I've used up about five or six sanding belts with it. And the question is, how is it held up? Using wooden bearings for the idler roller was a bit of an experiment and uh, I can't really see any signs of wear on those. I figured they should be good for at least another 10 years. The inner tube covering on the idler roller has held up really well. No issue with that. Um, for the drive roller, because it's bigger, I couldn't quite stretch an inner tube over that. So I coated that with uh, caulking and spread that nice and evenly. And that has, for the most part, held up except for this one spot. There's a bit of a gash in it here. And that's because I'm usually using this thing as an edge belt sander. And that gash is right at the level of the table where I'm doing a lot of the sanding. If I was building it now, I'd probably buy a fat bike inner tube to put over that bigger roller. But back in 2006, those weren't very common, so I hadn't thought of that. And I should have just put this on there a bit thinner, and then this wouldn't have been an issue. Mind you, I hadn't actually noticed that there was a bit missing here until I actually opened it up now. The belt started slipping on me one time, so I moved that motor over this way a bit to add more tension. Right now, it's as far over as the mounting bolts will go, so if it starts to slip again, I'll just have to replace the belt. I made the uh, motor pulley out of wood. Uh, part of the motivation was uh, to cut $10 off the bill of material, which basically uh, pays for the plants because that's what I charge for those. But the wooden pulley is not entirely optimal. You can see there's some cracks in it here and here and here. And I think the reason that's got cracks in it is because it dried out too much just from heat. Because when I use this sander for an extended period of time, that gets fairly hot. But this pulley is made out of very hard wood and if it ever breaks, I might glue it back together with construction adhesive because even heat doesn't seem to undo that. I should have uh, left it a little bit wider in this direction and that direction which would have given a bit more support. A uh, problem with a wooden pulley is it's not very good at conducting away heat. So if ever the machine stalls in such a way that the motor still turns but the belt doesn't move, you have a lot of heat being generated here and the belt is not moving to carry that heat away and uh, unlike aluminum, wood doesn't conduct that heat away very quickly, so you end up with a smoking belt pretty quickly. This is much less of a problem for big wooden pulleys like I have on my bandsaw wheels, because if it ever stalls, um, it always slips on the smaller pulley. That's the motor pulley, not the big wooden pulley. The other pulley on here is a half inch pulley, and it's on a 12 millimeter shaft. That didn't quite match up, so I had to put a shim in there when I put it together. And that's held up really well, better than I expected because these set screw pulleys often come loose. Because these cheap aluminum pulleys usually have just a tiny little bit of play on the shaft. As it turns, the belt is pulling it this way and that way and this way and that way. Basically constantly pulling that thing back and forth and if it's at all loose, it keeps wiggling and over time it makes that hole bigger. So imagine this is a set screw pulley on a shaft that is just a little bit smaller um, so it can wiggle and if you clamp it down with a set screw like that it makes contact up here and down here but not on the sides. So the only thing that keeps it from wiggling side to side is friction here and here. So unless that set screw is really tight it just kind of wiggles a little bit like that and then with friction it just wears things out a bit more and then it just wiggles more and more and more and eventually the pulley becomes unusable. I've seen on some pulleys they have a second set screw to basically clamp it more into a corner, but it's still not ideal. For a large industrial application, it's typically more of a collet like is used to hold a rotor bit in a rotor. And the collet is just a conical sleeve with a few slots in it so it can shrink and expand a little bit. That goes on the shaft, and then the pulley would have a conical hole in it that goes on top of that. And that wedges in there nice and good, and then there'd be a flange that is screwed against the pulley to push that collet on there to keep it on there nice and tight. And for some unattended industrial machine or HVAC system that nobody's watching, having that not come loose is really important. Whereas in my workshop, if a pulley starts rattling, I notice and I fix it. Certainly the pulley in my table saw has started to rattle from time to time, and the pulley in my 20-inch bandsaw also rattled at some point and I just shimmed it and that fixed it. 
And I found if I take one of these pulleys and I put a plastic shim in there so tight that I have to hammer it on, that doesn't come loose over time. And two other things I changed is I added these labels because I was forever getting confused which one is which. So this one is tension. And this one, if I turn it this way, moves the belt up. And then also the uh, wooden spring thing in the back, this part here was a bit too thin originally, so I had to replace that with a thicker one. But uh, back to this sander, it's connected to a dust collector, which is also connected to the switch that turns this one on. So it has its own dust collector. It's the one back here. I should check how much dust is in that one. It's been a year and a half since I last emptied out that dust collector. Sanding dust is just very fine dust and generally cyclones don't do that well with it. But I find if I suck a whole lot of it out with a cyclone at once, then it ends up in the bucket and then it's easy to get rid of. These wood screws may wear out eventually. If they do, I'll use longer screws and if those wear out, then I'll use bigger screws. And if those were out, I might put plugs in there. The dust level in the collection bucket went from down here to up here, so that was quite a bit of sanding dust I just sucked out of the filter. And what's prompted me to film this update video is I've been working on editing the uh, five-year-old build series for the sander down to one shorter video. So I thought an update with that would be nice.